Now, it might seem like our hard work is over, but we still have to pay attention to the ambient temperature. It's going to take at least 12 hours for these candles to cure. And to help them cool evenly, I space them about two inches apart and make sure the ambient temperature of the room doesn't change overnight or over the day, depending on when you're pouring. This is the cooling curve. Cooling too fast can lead to cracking, filming, frosting, or pull away. Cooling too slow can lead to fat bloom or mushrooming. To avoid cooling too slow, use a fan for indirect airflow to help speed up cooling. To avoid cooling too fast, pay attention to ambient temperature in the room over the entire curing time. Being mindful of seasonal temperatures outside, make sure the room is consistently the same temperature and humidity over the entire cooling process. Being consistent in this part of the process is sometimes harder than you might think. I've heard stories of people leaving their candles to cool overnight and turning off the heat before they go, only to come back in the morning to a batch with a lot of cracking. Another candle maker told me they had a fan in the room, but it only cooled one side, and when they came back, the candles on that side of the room had all pulled away. I've even noticed that I need to keep a dehumidifier running in the humid summers and make sure the heat doesn't shut off in the cold winters. 